from Appleton, Wisconsin. This is the Anderson Pens Podcast. Welcome to APTV episode 491 for Thursday, May 18th, 2023. This week we have banter news updates, <laughs> divine new Visconti, a verdigree restock, two Lamis that Eric loves, a contest winner, a new contest, plus a flock of pelicans that are landing soon. Hey, <laughs> Thanks Lisa. for joining us. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know I used to, before I owned our current house, I used to own a house that had four foot ceilings. It had to move. I just couldn't stand living there. All right. This week we have location <sighs> bumpers history museum at the castle from local history to Houdini. The exhibits offer a glimpse into life in Appleton and the Fox cities. And it's just down the street from our current location. Yes. Uh, about a couple blocks. Uh, currently, the History Museum at the Castle has exhibits on Houdini. The exhibit is called AKA Houdini and the Fox Valley. Fox Valley. And the exhibit is called Perspectives, a Fox Valley Visual Anthology. It formerly used to be called the Houdini. I think it was. Was it do, the. Do we call it the Houdini we, Museum? We always called it the Houdini Museum. I don't know if it always was the History Museum and just the locals call it. The Houdini Museum. Um, that's all I called it for years. And it's then all, it's all the locals still call it. Yeah. The Houdini yeah. Museum. So, so. Uh, today, Thursday, May 18th, is International Museum Day. I like this one. Held annually and coordinated by the International Council of Museums, this highlights a different theme every year to reflect a relevant issue facing museums. This, the theme this year is sustainability and well being. Cool. Nice. Uh, tomorrow, Friday, May 19th, of course, is National Bike to Work Day. This takes place on the third Friday in May in the middle of National Bike Month, which I did not know was National Bike Month. I so know. You are. I think that means I have to buy a bike. No. Uh, this encourages us to bike to work and raise awareness of cyclists as they commute to and from work each day. So, now, I think what you need to share with the class is that for years, you rode your bike Every day to work, yes. even in the winter. And what was your cutoff? Uh, yeah, so I did it, uh, actually, it, when I worked down the street, I worked down the street about three blocks. Um, I commuted for about three years in a row. My cutoff point where I I was not going to ride was minus 20. And if it was at minus 20, the car wasn't starting either. So I was, and that's Fahrenheit, of course. <laughs> um, <laughs> um uh, the car wasn't going to start, so I was going to work from home. But I rode every day, um, every day for three years uh, to work. And sometimes even in the rain, in the winter. Yeah, it didn't matter if it was if it, if it was rain. I had a raincoat. I mean, I had about a six tenths of a mile ride to work, seven tenths of a mile ride to work. So it was downtown. Um, and uh, in the winter, yeah, I mean, I had people cheering me on when the snow was like two feet and um ice well, and all you that only stuff. fell once or twice I, I usually fall about once a year and I, it was always in the same corner and so every year i after about three or actually it was probably more than three years i did that but uh, after a couple of years i realized you know those corners i need to kind of take straight on so there you go all right oh. uh news pen party update um not a ton of new things going on at the new store. Uh, they did get the tile in in the bathroom, and I think that they are installing <laughs> everything. Hey, better than a concrete floor. Uh, I believe that the bathroom should be finished with toilet sink mirror this week. Um, in fact, I may go check that out. Um, and then the carpet's been ordered, and we are just waiting for it to arrive so they can install it. And then we can start. This is the most exciting part, like, even more than the pen party. Moving stuff out of the house. Moving stuff out of the house in the garage to get things set up. But um, we do have confirmation from all of our vendors, I believe, with um, hotel and flights. And uh, it'll be an interesting flow of vendors. Um, one of them isn't coming in until late Friday, so he'll be here Saturday, Sunday. One is leaving early on Saturday, so he'll only okay. be here. So it'll... It'll just be a big mix. Okay. But giveaways are still only going to be on Friday and Saturday. 
Yes. Yes. Unless, as, as of right, unless we have more unless stuff. Unless we have a ton of stuff, stuff and we just decide to surprise the people who show up on yeah, Sunday. Yeah, so why not? not? Why not? Why not? Uh, but we are super excited about all that. Um, we got our postcards in and um, yeah. Great. Great. So, so those will be getting, if, if you're in a local area. And you order. You, you may you may be getting a, a postcard just as a reminder. Yes. So, um, so no, it's, it's really exciting that it's getting closer. Yeah. It's a little scary. So, um, other news, we are going to Florida. Uh, we're, we're not, no, we're, 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 we're vacationing. You and I we're vacationing. Personally, our vacation. We're not, we're not, AP is not moving. No, 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 no. Oh God, no. Um, <laughs> oh hell no. <laughs> we're, we're taking a short, a short vacation. In fact, you're leaving today as a matter of yes. fact, or you're actually not even here. Um, yeah, this I'm is, already this gone. This is like some kind of facsimile. Yes. Um, um yeah, I'm actually dog sitting for my brother, and it was cheaper for him to fly us both down and put us up and give us money right. in his car to watch the dogs. And uh, so we will be working from uh, Florida and beaching it. No shells. No shells. We don't need any more shells. Last time we brought back like three and a half pounds of shells when we went in January. I, I still haven't seen them. I don't know where they are. They're in a box. Okay. Like, where we're all good shells should be, apparently. <laughs> yeah, I got to get a Thanks, big... Thanks, Jeff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Whose birthday was yesterday? So. Yes. Happy so birthday happy to birthday my little brother. Uh, vacation. And for those of you who have been um, commenting, you know, bring back stuff, bring back Eric. Number one, rude. <laughs> We've been, we haven't you're, you're, been You're really bothered by that, uh, yeah, aren't you? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> um, Steph and Eric will be back while we are gone. So you'll get your fill then. What do you call a pig that does karate? A pork chop. Or should I talk while you drool over these? No, I'm, you talk and All I'm right. going to play Vanna White. Okay, uh, just in the Visconti Divina Elegance wave, uh, we have this in a fountain pen and bowl, a bowler ball. Ballpoint. Ballpoint. Jeez, do you need help? Oh my, where did that come from? So, bowler ball? What is I, that? I, I don't know. I'm a little concerned. I don't know. But it it's does a, look it's really a ball, good in your It's pocket. a ballpoint. Yes. Anyway, fountain pen and ballpoint. The Viscati Divina Elegance in the new wave color features a classic spiral shape that evokes the Nautilus, which is a symbol of divine proportion. It is. And the soft turquoise resin is just stunning. The sterling silver accent strips help to define the spiral shape and add a touch of elegance. Uh, it is inspired by the Italian Renaissance, the Golden Ratio, the Nautilus, the pentagram, and Anderson pens. There you go. Uh, um, not the last part. But. Yeah. So for those of you who are big into matchy-matchy, uh, number one, this is gorgeous. It's not bad. Brian was like, well, I don't mm. know if we should buy it. I walked up to the table, talked to our sales rep. It matches my shirt. I though. need this. If you are into matching your pen with your ink, there are three ink colors that are killer with this. Um one is the Visconti self-portrait. Absolutely beautiful with this. Good choice. Uh, the second one is uh, Diamine Soft Mint. I know what the third one's going to be. Uh, it's the from third France. one is uh, the Herban Color Diabolo Menth. Um, we're actually out of that one, otherwise, I'd have the box. Um, this is really, really close to, like, really, really close to um, Tiffany Blue. Hmm. I think we're allowed to say that. Um, and years ago, we had a customer come to a show, and he had a Tiffany box, and he desperately needed to match an ink to the box. So forever, I will always wonder, was he trying to get out of trouble, or was he trying to stave off being in trouble? But uh, this is absolutely gorgeous. Uh, if you like a slightly bigger pen, this is this is really at the top end of a pen that would work for me. Um who does post? It, you wouldn't want to post. I wouldn't that. want to no, post. It's it. I not know. really. It, well, at post, it's way too long. Yes, it is. Yeah. But this is a gorgeous, gorgeous color. Captive converter. Yes. Eighteen karat gold nib. Hook safe lock. Uh, if there's a nib you're we've, if there's a nib you're looking for and we're out of it, just let us know. We we'll see if we can get one for you. Uh, the ballpoint's nice. I like, yes. I've always liked the ballpoint. It's it's the right size. It's not too long. It's it's a little bit weighted toward the back because of the shape, but that fits in your hand. Uh, quite nicely. Absolutely um, gorgeous color. Parker style ballpoint refill. 
And um, please do me a favor and buy it. Otherwise, I may have to have one. Uh, and of course, uh, my pen compatible. So you can yes. put, your, put your initials or what what have you. Uh, well, I wonder how like the turquoise whatever. stone would look. Yeah, it might there. it might be too might much. Be too blue, it might be yeah. too much. Yeah. Pilot Custom Seven Four Three in Verdigris is back in stock. Um, this is a gorgeous green resin body, gold plated clip and trim. Uh, is a number 15 size nib on this, which is nice. Big nib. It's very appropriate for the size of the pen. It is. Um, it comes in extra fine, fine, medium, broad, double broad, and FA. Um, it has the same uh, body and uh, shape as the uh, familiar custom 823, but it uses the Con 70 converter, or you can use cartridges, which makes um, cleaning this thing super easy yes. as opposed to the A23. Yes. Um, it comes with a full bottle of ink, which is that cool uh, cool bottle design with the pedestal. Right. Uh, and a larger satin lined presentation box. So these are back yeah. in stock. And of course, we also have these in black. Um, so. Yes. But really, really which, a neat, neat thing. Which pen. came out, and that was great to have the black 743. Um, and I think that that really just kind of got pushed aside when just what, what was a like, month yeah, later, yeah, it was like a, weeks, like a month, a month, and that was it. And then the verdigris came out, and the poor black one just well, is getting you know, no this love. this may not be for everyone, and again, it no, no, it doesn't really matter. Not sure, uh, but it, you know, this color may not be for everyone. Right. So if you want something a little bit more conservative, uh, the black the and gold black is, is, is a classic, classic option. Yes. All right, so let's talk about some of the pens Eric loves. Uh, so these, yeah, so these apparently Eric Eric really likes, and I'm still waiting for him to come in and get one. He came in to get one, and we had sold out. Uh, we only got a couple in, and then we had sold out. So he hasn't been back, but um, actually, it's this one here, isn't it? Yeah. So we have, uh, Lamy has, um, Lamy's one of the manufacturers, one of the only manufacturers that we, we carry a, a multi-pen for. Um, so some people like the ability to have different colors of ink. And so, of course, the Lamy 2000 comes in a multi-pen, a four-pen, um, blue, black, red, and green ink, all using those uh, mini uh, D132 refills, uh, mini ballpoint refills. Well, Lamy also makes two more multi-pens, which we're going to talk about today. Um, this one is the ST Tri-Pen yes. in black. Um, it's got a matte black lacquer body. Um, with matte black uh, clip and nose cone, so it's super stealthy. And then the twist action mechanism is what extends the red or blue ballpoint refills. You've got to line up the center trim band yeah, to the color that you want. So there's a little band there. And so you line that up, and it'll pop out either the red or the so blue. Red there, and then there's a little indicator on the end of the refill too. Yes, so to tell you what you're looking at. What you're looking at. And then there's a kind of a silvery gray one. Which is the pencil. Which is the pencil. And then when you have it in the pencil mode, that's when the top here actually is usable. That you click to extend the lead. And this uses a 0.5 millimeter lead. So pretty cool. Pretty super cool. It's yes. pretty thin. Awesome. And then, of course, you pull this off, and then there's, and there's the, the eraser for your pencil. So I love little erasers. I think they're cute. Yeah? yeah you want one of these? No. <laughs> <laughs> I have enough pens. All right. Well, this is, this is a right. ballpoint pen. So, so the Lamy CP1, also a tri-pen. This one is in brushed stainless steel. Classic. Um, brushed stainless steel body and cap. Uh, polished chrome clip and polished chrome nose cone. So you've got the brush and bit the of polish. Bit, yeah. That's kind of fun. Same kind of twist action mechanism. Line it up um, to get the color or the pencil that you want. Also a 0.5 millimeter yeah. lead. Now this one's a little bit different where it is the, uh, the ST has red and blue in a 0.5. This has red, red or and black. black. Now that's not to say you can't change that out no oh. you just your indicator will remain the same but these like i say you these are put blue you, you can put, put green, green red whatever, whatever you want you just pull the refill out and put a new one in so if you don't if you if you need a blue you can take the, the red out and then you've got black and red but um very cool but yeah and again when you have it in pencil, pencil mode, mode then you can use the top to extend the let very cool and there's your refill so neat little multi-pen. So if you're the type that needs a multi-pen, now there are three three options for you 
Uh, these two, including a pencil, which is, I got to admit, pretty That's handy. That's kind of cool. Pretty handy. Yeah. There you go. All right. So uh, I've got a couple of pens here that uh, that are, I, I guess. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, you can touch them. <laughs> I haven't seen um, them. They're, they're uh, I guess, what we consider experienced pens. They're used pens uh, that came in on trade. And um, you're going to break it. I'm not. <laughs> Um, and th th these are quite unusual. Um, they're super cool pens. So what, what I've got here is I've got, uh, this is actually a Dunhill. Uh, you don't see very many Dunhills, uh, but this is uh, the uh, Dunhill Sidecar is what this model is. What a fun name. It is a fun name, right? Um, and this is this pen is actually made by S.T. DuPont, uh, believe it or not. Uh, brass barrel. It's got this cool kind of neural, cool. neural section on there. Uh, we've got a solid gold nib, uh, rhodium plated, uh, cartridge converter. Don't break it. Comes with the converter. Um, you know, neat, neat looking clip. Um, it it does actually post, which is pretty nice. It posts right on the end there. Um, nice length posted. Love the section. That's really yeah, cool. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It's a little bit slender, but it's not too slender. No, it's, it's, it's a good not, size. It's a good size. I like that. Uh, so we've got the Dunhill. Good size nib. Uh, it looks like about a medium from oh, here. Too fat. Well, that's good. We can solve that. Uh, <laughs> and then this one here. Now these, neither of these have boxes or papers, uh, but they are in really. I, I would call them near mint condition. They're they're they have been used. Um, we did clean them and ink them. Uh, this one here is the Delta Parthenope. And then you cleaned them again, right? <laughs> yeah, we cleaned them again. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and and it's got a really super cool uh, resin. Uh, actually, it's probably celluloid, uh, celluloid a section on the barrel. This kind of lovely brown, light orange, um, uh, and then of course the Delta stamped nib. That is so pretty. So this is not like the new Deltas. This is the old Delta with the stamped nibs, not the laser engraved nibs, gold nib. Um, now this is an interesting pen, right? Um, because uh, first of all, oh, I love it when it screws on to post. It screws on to post and that it is lines so up. Nice. It lines up. That's clip clever. to the nib. Uh, but what's interesting about this pen is it's a little bit shorter. Okay. It's not quite super long, um, and what that means is it is a cartridge only pen. So your oh. standard Schmidt K5s or your your converters don't fit uh, inside the barrel because it's a smidge smidge shorter. You can see kind of in my hand, it just kind of reaches, uh, what is this, the first web space, I think is what this is called. Um, but posted, it's really a really a solid length. Great. Um, really a super cool pen. Um, and then, of course, they're numbered in, and stamped on the back of the cap. That's a pretty barrel. So this is a really, really pretty pen, and it's got the Delta logo on Very the top cool. of the cap. But uh, these two were, are just in, and... Um, I, you know, we have, I don't think we've ever had a Dunhill here ever. Um, so That's pretty, cool and it's got it's got some nice weight to it too. I think uh, you know a, a, as it sits here, this is a really nicely balanced pen. Um, but uh, anyway, those are those are now available. You can't have them. I I've got my eye on something else. What? Why did the Clydesdale give a pony a glass of water? Because he was a little horse. Last time, I think we talked about what we got at the Chicago Pen Show, and we were, I believe, incorrect. I did we bring were, my we pen. We were incorrect, yeah. We were incorrect. Yes. Uh, I did not pick up a ruby red. I believe this is the raspberry. Um, it's the, look, it's the raspberry. <laughs> I think it's the raspberry, um, but super excited about that. That's the all-star. Yes. Yes. And what year was that? 2007? I don't remember. Okay. This is the Raspberry Limited Edition. I believe edition. it's Raspberry. Yeah. And um, I owe you an apology. Okay. Well, and the audience. Oh, well, we got this. <laughs> Justin, is this running? <laughs> All right. Very good. Very so good. last week, um, I kind of spoke for Brian and said that he would tell you how many pens he had if you asked. And... There's no way that he's going to have time to count all those pens in a week. I, I, so we kind of agreed to go with a number. Well, see, I, I've I, I, I've tried to count a number of times before, and I think the universe doesn't want me to count. I think the universe doesn't want me to know. Well, because I, I mentioned I, I tried counting one time, got interrupted. I counted a second time, and I wrote everything down in a notebook. 
in a pocket notebook, which I usually carry with me. Is that the one you washed? I, and, and then I washed it. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> that didn't work. And I didn't. And, and I didn't. I didn't finish. And then I washed it, so it's barely barely legible. Um, but I was and I was trying to do it so that I could go back if I needed to count again. But I was doing it by drawer in the case. But then you also had the question of does it count? Well, what counts as a all pen? the one? What counts as a pen? And my answer was: Did you buy it as a pen as opposed to a cap or a barrel? Well, see, sometimes I have pens. So I I, I define it one of a couple ways. One. Okay. If it's a pen, I've, if it's something I've purchased for the collection, right? It doesn't matter if it doesn't have a nib. It doesn't matter if it doesn't have a cap, right? Okay. I, I don't use. See, I don't. I don't buy a cap just to put in the collection. I would only count it as. That would be weird. Those for the collection. If you bought it to restore and sell, that doesn't count. If you bought it as stock, yeah, I mean, those, technically those don't, these are all ours. Yeah, no, that doesn't count. That, that doesn't, doesn't count. count. But you know, I have I have a number of pens that I, I've acquired over the years that are very rare. Uh, Parker Silver Dollar, for example, was made in what eighteen ninety six or something crazy like that. Yes, no cap. Uh, I'll never get one, but if if you want to have one, you, you know that's a representative example. Right, minus sans the cap, which could be made, I suppose. Okay, so th that to me counts. Um, you know, do pencils count? Uh, I'm getting nitpicky. Yeah, um, I, I kind of count pencil. I just count yeah. as writing instruments. But then there's all the stuff in the basement, which. Yes. Some I mean, is, you know, I, some I, may end up in your pocket. I, I literally, some may not. on my kitchen table, have a bag full of green Esterbrook transitional J yeah. pens. He I held mean, it up and said, well, does this count? Does that count? Like, I don't know. I don't so know. probably so. I wouldn't necessarily count it. All right. But anyway. we're, we're going to go with over 2,500 is Brian's number. That, that's, that's, that's a safe bet. Okay. All right. So... Getting to, in a long way, the contest from <laughs> last week. Run. How many fountain pens do you own? Thanks for the nudge, Marilyn Gardner. So, the fewest. Beth, I have seven. I started my collection 10 days ago when my preppy arrived. Wow. Give it time. you got a great per day average. And upon testing, I discovered that I love fountain pens because my wallet does not. My next purchase was a set of Vistas. Okay. Right. Most. There you go. Friedrich D. I stopped counting at 2,000 pens. I don't include the matching pencils to the sets either. I think I have a problem. I think you should count them. Just count it as a, just count it as a writing instrument because you have it. You've got to, you got to account for space for it. You've got to account storage. Okay. Um, and the average? But I agree. Yeah, after 2,000, it's, it's impossible to yeah. keep track. It really is. Two thousand. First, com first world problem. I understand, and, yes. and and we have friends I know have more pens than I do, by far. I know that's really sad. <laughs> so. uh, the average was of the respondents that provided an actual number of pens, not a range. The average number of pens reported was seventy two point nine. So that's a solid number. How that's do you get the really point nine? <laughs> point nine. All right. Go. All right. Jim says, at the time I was watching this episode, I had 36 pens. Then later this morning, it jumped to 37 when I received the pilot decimal I had ordered from your online <laughs> store. I can't, can't quite count the two I have on order, but have not been delivered, nor the two more I'm planning on purchasing. <laughs> when I receive those, the count will be up to 41. So, there you go. Uh, job well done, Jim. Job well done. Mara Christian says, I keep an Excel spreadsheet to track all of my pens and inks. I have 180 pens accumulated over 20 years. Do that math. That's good math. Um, nine a year? That's not even one a month. Admittedly, with most of them purchased in the last three years when I discovered pen shops online. Okay, well. I used to keep keep track of my pens. You I did. Yeah. I remember, I remember. Yeah, decades I, I ago gave, you I gave sent you the me. Sheet, yeah. I wonder how many was in that sheet. I might still have that. I, you didn't, no, get rid of it. <laughs> we, sold, we sold like a third of those pens. We did. Pens. We yeah. did. Uh, Walt Huntsman says, I only began collecting a couple of months ago, so my collection is small. Eight fountain pens altogether. Awesome. No worries. It doesn't have to be 2,000. You know, if it's eight solid pens that you love... Fantastic. Doesn't matter if it's doesn't eight or matter. This is not eighty a, or what it's not a competition. It doesn't matter if it's eight thousand. Right. Yes, it does. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, it does. Uh Clark Freelix says, I currently have 35 pens in my collection, only eleven inked. I've been trying to reduce the number this year. Me too. 
Uh, Summer Pearl says, I always watch APTV on Thursdays. Thank you. At work. At work. Be careful. Uh, a delightful treat to look forward to. I had to wait till I got home to count my pens. And I have 103, which in degrees might be a pen fever. Night. Oh, my. Was I ever surprised. Yeah. You know, that's a, that's a good number. 103 okay. is a solid number. I bet you got some really, really great ones, too. Yeah. Tim Chi says, I just checked my spreadsheet. Another spreadsheet. I have 98 fountain pens, eight are inked, all but one work. Yes, I keep track of all my pens, including when they went into dry oh dock, goodness. which ink, etc. Don't judge. No, I judge that to be smart. I, I couldn't I do like that. that. I couldn't do that. See, the, my problem was when I did a spreadsheet, I said, okay, these are the roles I'm going to use. And I didn't use a database, I used a spreadsheet. And then all of a sudden, one day I'd be like, oh, well, you know, I really ought to keep track of this field. And then I'd put it in, and then I'd have to go and I'd have to add for every pen. And I come up with another field. Oh, I'm going to send it out to be restored. Oh, that's need another field. Oh, what date? And then before before long, it's it's too long and it's too hard to manage. Okay, so now you just don't send them out. No, I fix them. Okay. All right, the one, the only Marilyn Gardner. I have 354 pens, which includes a handful of vintage pens that are not currently in good repair, and a few others that are. Oddly. I love this. Oh this God. means that my ratio of pens to blank notebooks is almost exactly one to one. That's fantastic. Okay. That's the perfect ratio. You know, and, and, and don't worry about the minted pens that are not in good repair. Bring them up. Because they've lived a long life. It's time for them to relax. <laughs> We're not in good repair these days. Uh, RGC 571 says not enough, only 71. Well, there's still time. Okay. Uh, and the winner is Terry... Edgington, and her winner comment is count Brian count laugh out loud, and I will too count all my pens. So she didn't yeah. actually give a she number. She didn't actually give a number. Hmm. Well, right. congratulations, right to Eric at AndersonPens.com, and he'll take care of getting that uh, twenty dollars credit onto your Anderson Pens account. There is a bonus comment from Paul Herman, and he says, today it's a holiday I can get behind. This was on May 11th. Happy Eat What You Want Day. Oh. And then the question is, which dessert is perfect for eating in bed? A sheet cake. There you go. All right. <laughs> New contest survey this week. What is the one that got away pen? Oh. Either one you regret not having purchased or regret having sold. Please let us know in the comments section below. Go. Uh, my first modern fountain pen that I bought at the Miami Pen Show in two, 1999, I think, was a Visconti Kaleido <laughs> in the purple color. Not, not the burgundy? You I, always thought it's burgundy. It, it's burgundy. It's not but purple. it was kind of a plummy burgundy. Yes. And I had it, and it was my very first... Modern pen came in this cool little pouch, which I kept the, the pouch, the little leather pouch. But I eventually sold it, and I have looked for this thing. If anybody's got one out there, send me an email. If you got one for sale. It was one of the original. Her birthday's coming up. Not the second batch oh. of colors. There was. Oh, okay. There's, yeah. there's only one burgundy. I believe so. There's not two, and there's two. No, burgundy. there were separate. Like, there was a red later. But, yeah, that's. I think the one that got away was yeah, the one that Yeah, you talk I about sold. that a lot. <laughs> I've had a lot of pens. I've sold a lot of pens. Yeah. I only lost one, and then I found it years later. Yeah. Yeah. But, okay. um, yeah, okay. that's, for some reason, the one that got away. So. Well, I don't know. I, um, I've i sold, uh, well, some of my Omas, maybe. I had that Arco. Or that, mm -hmm. what was that? The Burgundy o Omas, uh, the, the Purple Aubergine. Oh, yeah, that was Or the pretty. black with sterling, the paragons. There I don't were, know. I there have, were a I few. Have four, four paragons, and I should, have kept, I should have kept the black, the black with sterling trim, well, that one. So, anyway, let us know what for you was the one you regret not buying or the one you regret selling. I, I, I like these. I think they're cool. They've been around a while. We just haven't had them, but now we will. Um, the Pelican Sovereign. M200 in the brown marble and the green marble. So these are the classic M200 fountain pen, slender piston fillers, uh, uses bottled ink only, of course, and features a marbled barrel and black cap 
and grip section with the gold plated trim. Available in brown or green. Uh, and the green is really a funky green. Yeah. It's kind of a. It's pretty. A, it's not really green. It's not really blue. It's kind of a funky color. Uh, stainless steel gold plated nib. Uh, smooth rider, of course. Does tend to, they do tend to ride a bit on the wider side. Yes. And of course, they're threaded nib units. Um, it's a smaller mid-size pen, uh, it's comfortable in the hand for many folks, and it posts amazing. Yes, yes, these are great. Um, now, the M200 pens are the ones with the gold trim. Yes. And we are about to talk about the M205, which is... Silver trim. The blue marble with silver trim. So yes, whenever there's a five at the end of the, the Pelican numbering system, it's M205, 805, 605. Right. Means it's got silver trim. So the blue marble is the same thing, um, piston fill only, blue marbled barrel, uh, black cap section, and uh, we didn't mention um, turning knob is oh, also black. Yeah, yeah. And um, this has a stainless steel nib as well. Does run a little fat, so if you tend to f to prefer a finer nib, definitely go down a size. Yeah. Um, I like the size. It's it's really. A good size for me. I used to have a, the anthracite. Do you remember the anthracite? Vaguely. The gray? Vaguely. What a good looking pen. I miss that pen. That might that might go in there just a little bit. That is to the not oil. your well, one you that know, got away. But you can't get it anymore. It was a really yeah. it was my first piston fill, it was my first pelican. I don't actually own a single pelican in my collection right now. I do. Uh, but the anthracite was just such a neat smoky gray. I have that vintage pelican. Oh, oh you, you you do have one? Did I get that for you for your anniversary? No. No, I think I had that. I think that's a... <laughs> I bought you one and you hated it. <laughs> it didn't write or something. a couple of those, yeah. Fell apart. Yeah, something. Anyway. So, anyway. So those are coming soon. Uh, I believe they've, they're have they in transit. They should yes. be here any day. Yes. Um, and nice I, I, we, we should mention that um, there is one that has a different nib sizing, but extra fine, fine, medium. There is one that only comes in fine, medium, broad. I forget which one that is. Um, I hate it when they do that. I, I just have to say that out loud. There's a retailer. It's just so annoying. <laughs> be nice to be consistent. Yeah. But uh, so anyway, those are coming soon. What else you got? Anything? Nothing? I'm going on vacation. Bad looks. You're out of here. <laughs> you're out of here in an odd. So it's weird because you're leaving. Yes. And then I'm I'm sticking around for a couple of days before yes. I leave. And then I, why am I, why are we not leaving at the same time? Because Has that ever been determined? Yes. Why? Well, so that so, you didn't so, abandon so, Dave for so, the entire Someone's got to work in the store on Saturday. Somebody's got to work in the store, yeah. <laughs> then, but then I come back on Friday. Yeah. So, so I, I can... Oh. <laughs> Maybe because I'm going to be getting ready for your trip, and then I'm going to have to oh, pick up okay. afterward. All and right, all right. It's, yeah. it's for peace of mind. Very good. Well, next week you see Eric and Steph. Yes. Thanks so much for joining us. Tune in next time for more talk about pens, ink, and paper. You can check us out on social media as Anderson Pens. Uh, please like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And this week, the pen in my pocket is not an ST DuPont. I'm not going to talk about you're it. You're not going to talk about no, it? No, because I always screw it up. So well, you I'm can't screw it up. It, there's only the one line on the sheet. All right, I it know. used to be twice. Now there's only one. You I can't know. screw it up. So what uh, is that? I know what that the, is. The, this, I, I, I was kind of inspired by the, the your new paint color uh, in your office and our forthcoming um, Florida trip. And so this is the uh, Sailor 1911 uh, King of Pen in Fresco, which is no longer made. But of course, we do have all sorts of other fantastic King of Pen. King of Pens available yes. in stock. Great. That is a pretty awesome. color. See you in a couple weeks. Bye.